Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use Google Earth in your classroom. Google Earth has been around since 2001, and while it's undergone many changes over the last 19 years, there are a few updates over the past few years that some teachers might not be aware of. Right now, we have so many kids that are stuck at home because of COVID-19, and they feel isolated and alone. But Google Earth is a way to help them stay connected to the world around them in a very immersive way. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the amazing features in Google Earth Voyager, and I'm going to show you how to create your own personalized projects and virtual field trips that can be used by all teachers in every subject area and grade. The first thing I'm going to show you on our tour of Google Earth is the Voyager tool. The Voyager tool can be accessed over on the left side. There's a little icon that looks like the wheel of a ship. And Voyager is Google Earth's way of showcasing interactive guided tours, quizzes, and layers uh, that are really aimed to educate students and adults in several different areas. And you can see as I scroll down, we do have some different topics. There's editor's picks, there's games, layers, street view, nature, culture, travel, and education. And we'll quickly go through all of those. And you can see by just scrolling down, these are the editor's picks. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different topics from volcanoes to Harry Potter to architecture to 3D imagery uh, and a whole bunch of stuff. So let's start by looking at games. Now, these are interactive games that kids can play. And again, these range in topics from food to animal sounds, rock and roll icons, transportation. One of my favorites is where on Google Earth is Carmen Sandiego. And there are other games too, so like things about the natural wonders, and you can scroll through and find a whole bunch of different information. And the thing I love about it is it does really go across the curriculum with the different topics that it covers. There's also layers, so if you wanted to see like the global glacier coverage, or visualizing snow cover on Earth, or current hurricanes and tropical storms, there's also the street view tabs. So this will show you some of the most breathtaking views around the world. Um, so let's just select Egypt. And then on the right side, you can select if there's a place that you want to check. Or you can look on the left side where there's the little markers and click on one of those. Uh, so let's just pick the Great Sphinx. And again, you've got information about it on the right side. And now we've got the street view. And again, just like regular street views, you can move to get a different view. The next tab is nature. So this will show you wildlife and nature from around the world, whether it's animals from Africa, uh, bald eagles live, national parks. You know, there's underwater ones. There's dinosaurs. There's all kinds of different things that kids can choose from. And again, if you click on them, it will take you to a very detailed Google Earth tour. So like this one is humpback whales, select dive in, and it will show you a whale's journey. So here's an amazing tour that Google Earth has put together, which is a whale's journey. And you can see there's information that goes along with this. And if you click through, it will show you a whale's journey. So they spend summers in high latitudes, uh, where there's cold, nutrient-rich seas. And then if you click to the next one, in winter, they travel to warm, tropical, or subtropical waters. And it takes the kids on the actual journey that a whale would go through. The next tab is culture, which I think is a really great way to give kids exposure to different cultures of people and places from around the world. There's also a tab for travel. And this will show you all different travel destinations from around the world. And the final tab is by far one of the best. It's education. And this takes all different types of curriculum and ties it into Google Earth. So whether it's triangular structures around the world, geometry of sustainable architecture, underground railroad, uh, James Cook's first voyage to New Zealand, you've got poetry around the world, congressional redistricting. Uh, there's really something for every subject area. I mean, math and architecture, you can see circular structures, uh, Lewis and Clark's adventure, and if we were to click on that, again, it's going to take us through their actual adventure, so we can see it on this 3D map, and there's information on the right side as well that will take us through step-by-step step of their journey. And again, along the way, 
there's all these read mores, which will open up a new tab that will provide more information along the way. So one of the really great features of Google Earth is being able to create your own projects or virtual field trips. Uh, one of my other videos, Dr. Nathan Langrad had talked about all the benefits that students get from going on virtual field trips. And if you'd like to see that interview, there is a link in the description below, or you can click on the link at the top of this video. But now I'm gonna show you how you can create your own project. So over on the left side, there's a little magnifying glass so you can search. So I will search, let's say Statue of Liberty. So we'll look at the Statue of Liberty. And again, on the right side, you have like an information card that will give you information about the Statue of Liberty. And you can click on that. And it's got information about the Statue of Liberty and also other things that people have searched for. You've got different maps and you've got hours that the Statue of Liberty monument is open. So uh, just a little bit more information about the Statue of Liberty. And to move around in Earth, if you're using a mouse, you can scroll in. You can left click and drag to actually move. Or if you hold the shift button and left click, you can tilt. So I can zoom in and find the exact view I want. And also on the bottom right is the street view. So if you select the little person icon, you can see all the different spots that you can drag that person and see what it looks like from that area. So we'll just pick this one here and see what the Statue of Liberty looks like up close. And you can see that now I can scroll around and see what the view looks like from underneath. Now to create your own project. So if you wanted to say, take your students on a field trip of New York City, on the left side, there's a little icon that says projects. And you can click over on the bottom right where it says create. And you can create a project that will go into your Google Drive. So we will call ours New York. And again, you can add a description in here for your students. And then you can do one of a few things. You can select new feature and you can do a uh, search to add a place, add a place mark, draw a line or shape. You can add a full screen slide, which will give your students information. Um, or if you wanted to use this Statue of Liberty, since we already searched it, you can click down here on the icon and it will give you an option to add to project. And if I select add to project, it will give me an opportunity to uh, give it a title. I can edit the place. Now, when you edit the place, you can replace the information card or you can use the one that's on it. So if we wanted to replace, we can select our own pictures that we have students see. You could just do like a quick Google image search. So I could type in Statue of Liberty. And then I can select any photo that I want. And then that is what the students will see when they go to that Statue of Liberty. You can also put in a custom message to your students with any kind of information you want. It's got the opportunity to add links in as well. If you wanted to, you can add in your own custom place mark. So you'll see the default adds in like the yellow circle, but you could add in one of these tabs if you wanted. So you could make it a monument and you see it changes there. You can change the color as well. So if you wanted to make it, I don't know, say blue, it adds in a blue place marker. The other thing you can do is you can select what view the students see when they select each stop on your virtual field trip or project. So let's say, for instance, I want the students to have a better view of the Statue of Liberty. If I click on the pencil for that stop, I can now come in here and find the view that I'd like. So let's say I want this to be what the students see when they stop on the Statue of Liberty. I can select capture this view. And you'll see that it says it was saved. Now, when the students select that, this is the view that they'll get when they first come here. They'll be able to still scroll around. And if they want to do like the street views, they can still do those sort of things. But this is the view that they'll see. So if I go into preview presentation, you'll see that now that's the view. So let's just do one more stop so you can kind of understand what that looks like. So let's say we want to add in the Empire State Building. We can go back and we can do new feature. We can search to add a place. We'll do Empire State Building. And again, just like before, you'll see I've got the information card on the right. 
I can select add to project. I can save it as is, or I can edit it. And again, if I wanted to add in my own information, I can type that in below. I can add in any other pictures I want the students to see. And so just like before, I can also find the view that I want the students to have when they click on this. You could even do street view. So I can select a view from the top of the Empire State Building I want the students to have. So let's just pick one here, see what it looks like. Pick this one on top. So I could select, you know, this view if I want. I can capture this view. And now when students select the Empire State Building, this is the view they'll have. Maybe not the best because they won't be able to see the actual building unless they go out of it. But just to give you an idea of what that looks like, let's select present. And you'll see, again, the first stop is the Statue of Liberty. Here's the view that we selected we wanted the students to have. They would have any information that we added in. Remember, I took out the information that they had so that you could put your own information in there. And then if they select the next arrow, it's going to take them to the Empire State Building and the street view that we picked so they can see out from what it looks like from the top of the Empire State Building. Another feature that you can use is when you select New Feature, you can select Draw Line or Shape. And you'll see at the bottom, there's like the little like squiggle line. What you have the opportunity to do is like, let's say I wanted to take the students from the Empire State Building to Times Square. I can select a spot, click and drag. And then, you know, you can see I've created just a line there. And I can write something like path to Times Square. And just like before, you can edit your own message in there. So you could say something like, you know, this is the path to Times Square. Or if there was some kind of like, you know, historical thing that you wanted to show the students a path of, they this will show up on your map. So when I go to present, you'll see we get the Statue of Liberty, which we did. And then it'll go to the Empire State Building. And then from there, it will come to our path. And you'll see the path was on the map before, but now the students can see this is how they would get to Times Square. And then again, if you wanted to, you could click on Times Square and it will give you more information. You can click on, again, the students can do this as they're taking the virtual field trip. And there's all different tools that the students will be able to do as well. So they can explore as well. They could go and check out you know, the street view and things like that. One of the other tools I wanna to show you is the measuring tool. Over on the left side, there's something that says measure distance and area. And so you could actually ask your students something like, how far is it from the Empire State Building to Times Square? And they can select the measuring tool, click from the Empire State Building to Times Square. And you'll see over on the top right here, it will show you the distance and they can convert that if they want by clicking on the drop down area. So they could find it in centimeters, meters, kilometers, nautical miles, inches, feet, yards, miles, uh, all different types of things. Or you could have them do other stuff like find the area of a space. So, you know, what's the area of the space in between here? And they can just click on the spots and it will show you you've got perimeter, you've got area. So all different types of opportunities to incorporate math into Google Earth as well. So once you've finished with your project or your virtual field trip, you can share this with your students or colleagues. So you'll see at the top, there is an icon to share your project like the other Google apps. And then you can just type in the names or email addresses of anybody that you'd like to share it with. You can also get a shareable link that you can post in say Google Classroom or you can email to people. As I mentioned in the video where I interviewed Dr. Langrad, Google Earth really can be used by any teacher in any subject area in any grade because the possibilities are endless. You know, as an English language arts teacher, you could take your students on a tour of the setting of a book or where an author grew up. As a social studies teacher, you can take students and show them like cultures from around the world or where famous uh, incidents and events happened. As a science teacher, you can show all the different kinds of like wildlife and national parks. As a world language teacher, you can show the students the actual places of the languages they're learning. 
Uh, as a math teacher, you can use that distance tool to show all the different areas and perimeters and things like that. And really the list goes on and on. So I would love to hear from you. If you're using Google Earth in a creative way, please feel free to reach out to me by leaving a comment in the comment section below. Reach out to me on Twitter at Dan Spada. You can reach me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the ed tech show. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out as well. If you know a student that might benefit from using Google Earth, please share this video with them as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.